Hello class. So in this lesson we're going to continue on with quadratic functions. We're going to learn some special properties of quadratic functions. Um, we're going to talk about min and max values of quadratic functions. And, and the big thing is we're going to talk about two new forms, what we call intercept form of quadratic equations and standard form of quadratic equations. And then we're also going to be looking at a sample word problem where we can try to apply some of the things that we learned today. Properties of the parabola. So when we have a parabola, we've already talked about how the vertex is at, you know, this bottom point right here. We have this line. It's not part of the parabola per se, it, but it is an important line uh, that we call the axis of symmetry because we can just kind of fold this parabola in half across this line, and that would give us uh, what we call the line of symmetry. Note that it's a line equation. When we ask, what is the, e what is the uh, equation for the axis of symmetry, it should be in some form like this, where x is equal to h, or we'll also see cases where um, it's, it's, equal to, it's y is equal to a number. But it's always a line equation. It's not just a number. Just like the vertex is a coordinate point, uh, the axis of symmetry is a line. So uh, given a upward parabola, we see this point right at the vertex. The vertex is going to be the lowest point of the curve. And so we would say that the minimum value is at f of h, where h is the x-coordinate of the vertex. This is the y-coordinate, f of h. So if I'm asked, where is the minimum? What's the minimum? We evaluate the function at the value of h. Now we say that the portion of the graph which is uh, decreasing is, we, we think about it from going from the left to the right in terms of the x value. We're decreasing here, and then we're increasing over on this side. You know, when we have a downward parabola, the vertex again is um, a, a key point. In this case, it's going to be the maximum value, though. So the maximum value of this graph is going to occur at f of h. And the portion right here is going to be what we call the increasing portion, and then we have our decreasing portion. So let's look at how we can use symmetry. Symmetry is very powerful, so we want to be able to apply it when we can. Say we have this equation. We know immediately that the vertex, because this is in vertex form, is at 3, comma, negative 1, so we can graph that. Let's plot a point near the vertex, and when I say near, I take the x value of 3, and typically I'll just increase it by 1. Instead, I'll evaluate at x equals 4 what the value of the function is. So I plug that in, uh, into this, and I get negative 3, so I have another point at 4 comma negative 3. I can reflect that over the axis of symmetry, and, you know, I could think of my line going right down here and then drawing my parabola from there. Let me actually draw in the axis of symmetry into this graph here, though. So you can see how I plotted from here, the 4, comma, negative 3. I plotted this other point, 2, comma, negative 3, without really plugging anything in. I went, you know, in this case, I went one unit to the right, so I went one unit to the left. The y value stays the same because it's symmetrical. So I call this my line of symmetry, LOS, and I use a line equation to describe it. x is equal to 3. Okay, this is a new form, standard form. And if you remember, this is one of the definitions of a parabola. Anything that can be written in this form, ax squared plus bx, plus c is a parabola. Now recall we had this equation for vertex form, and let's do some, uh, you know, manipulation on this. Let's expand it out. So if I expand this, I get x squared minus 2hx plus h squared. And now I'm going to add all the like terms. I have my a x squared term here. My x term a times negative 2h is right here. 
And then I have my constant term, a times h squared, it's right here, plus my value of k. So you can see here that this is actually in what we call standard form. This is my a value, my b value, my c value. Let me just write it underneath this uh, standard form. So in blue here, I have my coefficients a, b, and c for my standard form parabola. In red here, I wrote kind of the equivalent. This is The a here in this context is the a coefficient in vertex form, the h coefficient and the k coefficient, or h constant and k constant for my vertex form. So we see kind of this relationship between them when we did this expansion exercise. And this tells us something very important. This tells us that the A has exactly the same meaning that it had in vertex form. So the blue A has the same meaning as the red A, which was the A in our... Let's see what we can use the C for. In this case, C is, is the y-intercept. When x is equal to 0, let's think about this. When we plug x in, this whole x equals 0, this whole term disappears. x is equal to 0, this whole term disappears. So y is equal to C. And so we have a point 0, comma C. That's our y-intercept. It's, it's kind of like in the line equation, mx plus b, b here, was our y-intercept. So the c value here in standard form is nice because it immediately tells us where the x-intercept is. So let's apply that to this equation here. This is an equation in standard form. Let's graph it. The first step will be to find the vertex. We need to do two steps here. First we find the x-coordinate, then we find the y-coordinate. x is equal to, the x-coordinate is minus b over 2a, so we plug in the value of b, we plug in the value of a into this equation, and we get the value x equals 1. Now we need to find the y value of the, of the vertex. So we take this equation, plug 1 into it, and we get the value of y, which is negative 2. So now we know that our vertex is at 1, comma, negative 2. So we can plot that. We can also, at the same time, in our second step, we can plot the axis of symmetry, and it's this line. It's this, um, and it's more of an imaginary line. Remember, it's not part of the graph. It's not the parabola itself, but it's kind of a key kind of characteristic of the parabola that we want to identify. So we draw kind of a dotted line at x is equal to 1, which is our axis of symmetry. Next, we're going to find another point, and we're going to use symmetry, and we're going to reflect it across the line of symmetry. There's two ways to find another point. If it's convenient, we can just get the y-intercept value. But if not, if it's not convenient, then we would just have to use some other mean. Because we have it in standard form, and we're kind of close to the um, vertex, we can know that the x, the, or sorry, the y-intercept is at 0, 1. Uh, because that's our C value. So we have one point here, we can reflect it, make another point over on the other side of the line of symmetry, and then create our parabola from there. Now if we did not, you know, have the y-intercept conveniently kind of close by, maybe then we could just find another point near the vertex. We could choose a value like x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 3, plug it in, and, and plot it out. Oh, I, I see I have a little mistake here. Uh, let's make a correction. This should be 2, uh, 2 comma 1. Okay, let's look at a sec second form now. So we talked about standard form. This is our third form now. Uh, again, a vertex form, standard form. Now our third form being intercept form. This is the form for this equation. And the cool thing about this form is it tells us intercept information. In this case, it tells us the x-intercept, not the y-intercept. In a lot of the previous forms, like slope-intercept form, it was always the y-intercept. 
But in this case here, we're talking about the x-intercept. And one way to think of it is as follows. We see the x minus p. This p is inside the parentheses. So you can imagine that it's talking about x-intercepts here. Note, um, not all quadratic functions can be written in this form. There are some parabolas that um, cannot be written in this form, and maybe we'll talk more about that uh, when we gather together. The cool thing about this uh, form is that the A, again, has the exact same meaning as the vertex form and the standard form value of A. So this will tell us whether it's going up or down and what kind of vertical stretch factor it has. The P and the Q tell us our x-intercepts. So let's suppose our intercepts are here at the values P and Q. If that's the case, we know that right in the middle of the P and the Q, right exactly in the middle, is the x-coordinate, which is the uh, location of both the vertex as well as the line of symmetry. So to find the point exactly in the middle of two other points, we can take the average. So x is equal to the average of the p and the q value that tells us where our, our line of symmetry is. So here's an example. Uh, this is in intercept form. We're going to take and plot the intercepts. x is uh, has an intercept at negative 2, and, and be careful, we have to take the opposite value of the 2, the opposite value of the minus 4 to give us our 4. So we plot out our x-intercepts. We know that the vertex is going to be exactly, the x-coordinate of the vertex will be exactly in the middle of these two, so let's find the average. The average of these two numbers is 1, and that makes sense, that, that, you know, that follows from what we would guess it to be. We plug 1 back into the original function here to find the value of y, and we evaluate that to be 3. So we have our vertex at 1, 3. And so we could plot that up here, and then we can draw our parabola. Let's add, um, well, let's add to this our line of symmetry. So let's draw this in. Um, and let's label it as x equals 1. That is our line of symmetry. Okay, let's end on a word problem. Suppose I have this first shot here of the golfer, and he, you know, started at 0, 0, the ball went up, followed this path, and ended up here 100 feet away. His second shot followed a, a form of this, you know, f of x is equal to this, so the question is, did his first shot or his second tra shot travel farther? Which of the two shots went higher? So let's just take it one at a time. We know that this is in intercept form. So the nice thing about intercept form is it tells us our intercepts. The first intercept is at 0. And you, know, you can think about this as x minus 0. That's our p, 0. The other... Uh, Q is 80, so we know that our intercepts are at 0 and 80. So the ball traveled on the second shot 80 feet. Compared with the first shot, um, the first shot traveled farther, 100 feet. Let's find the maximum now. So here's a little diagram. It went from 0 to 80, and we know the highest part of this graph is right at the vertex, and the vertex is going to be right in between 0 and 80. So we average the two. The average is at 40, so we know the vertex is at 40 comma something. So we want to figure out what that something is, what that maximum value is. So now we take our equation up here, plug 40 into the x value, multiply this out, we get our answer of 32. So at the very peak, it traveled 32 feet high, so therefore, compared with the first shot, which traveled only 25 feet high, the second shot went higher. So let's summarize. We've talked about three different forms, vertex form, standard form, and intercept form. We, we covered today how we can find the, the x-coordinate 
fairly easily using standard form with this equation. And we learned how we could find the intercept, the y-intercept, very easily just using the c value. Intercept form gives us the, the x-intercept, the p and the q directly, so that's really convenient. And it's not too hard, but we do have an equation we can use where we find the average of our x-intercepts in order to find the x-coordinate of the uh, vertex. So once we find the x-coordinate, we plug it into the function to find the y-value. Just like over here, once we find the x-value of the vertex, we could plug it in to the function to find the y-value. Okay? So this is a very useful table, and that summarizes all the things that we've learned so far. Okay? Have a good day, class.